Hello everyone, and please know that wherever you may be as you watch this video, or at whatever time you're entering in, please know that you are warmly welcomed to worship with the Church family of St. Mark's. In this worship service, I'll be asking the question as, ha as to how 2020 has changed us in what it means to be an authentic person of faith. Faith has had to grow and evolve to meet a new situation. Traditionally, Christians have talked about discipleship. So our question today is, what does it mean for you and me now to be faithful disciples of the godly way of life we know through Jesus Christ? Please take a few minutes now to be quiet as the organ plays. Refresh your soul, center your heart, and bring your life into God's presence. St. Mark's United Methodist Church and friends. My name is Irene Celadon. Some of you know me from the office at St. Mark's. I'm the administrator and I wanted to take the time to welcome you to worship today. I hope you enjoy the service. I invite you now to pray along with me. Let's pray together. Loving God, as we all gather to worship in this service, we pray that you will open our ears so that we may hear your voice. Open our minds so that we may grow in our thinking. Open our spirits so that we may know your leading and guidance. And open our hearts so that we may receive the gift of your love. Be with us now, we pray. Amen. In a moment, Elisha Lapia will read to us from the Gospel of John. But first, we're all going to sing together. Please join in singing, O God, give us pause.
scripture reading today will be taken from John 13, verse 35 to 35. And it reads, A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. This is the end of my scripture reading. Thanks be to God. Our guest today is Reverend Dr. Mary Elizabeth Moore. I've known Mary Elizabeth for a long, long time. I first met her, I can tell you the date, July 4th, 1976, the day of the Bicentennial. I had arrived in California for the first time the day before. And I spent the day with her, Mary Elizabeth and her husband, Alan Moore, and it was a wonderful welcome. Mary Elizabeth has given her life to seminary education in the area of training pastors and others in Christian education. She is currently the Dean of the Boston University School of Theology, so she joins us from Boston. I mention also that she has been a frequent delegate to General Conference and other major events in the life of the denomination. Welcome, Dr. Mary Elizabeth Moore. My favorite jokes in this season are the ones that make fun of the year 2020. My very favorite is the picture of a long wooden bridge, walking bridge across a river, and right in the middle of that bridge is an alligator. The caption says, this must be the path to 2021. The caption captures it all. This has been a long and tragic year with enormous losses of lives, rampant wildfires and hurricanes, Racial inequities reveal starkly in healthcare and criminal justice systems. The escalation of hate, hate and violence popularized as an appropriate way to control and punish people with whom you do not agree. In such a world, what does it mean to follow Jesus? In this season, I turned again and again to Jesus' central teaching to love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength and to love your neighbor as yourself. We've even had the privilege in 2020 to witness such love in people finding ways to survive and support one another amid severe financial losses in healthcare workers and grocery workers giving extra of themselves for the larger community. Families teaching their children at home and providing entertainment, people caring for fragile family members and neighbors, people pouring into the streets in peaceful protest of racialized violence, politicians ca campaigning to create, create a better life for all people, churches reshaping their ministries to feed hungry people and to gather people together for worship and study in virtual spaces. And exhausted people finding just enough strength for one more day and then another and then another. That is loving. That is discipleship. What we have learned in 2020 is that discipleship is not sweetness and light. It is not making disciples one person at a time so that we can then get about the business of transforming the world. Discipleship is about transforming the world. Disciples face into social and ecological injustices, even in the midst of a pandemic. Discipleship is about community. We wear masks and keep social distance to protect our neighbors as well as ourselves. We protest militarized violence in the streets because violence harms everyone. We work toward justice and healthcare systems because the human community includes everyone. And so should healthcare. We lower our carbon footprint and fight for climate justice to save God's creation from utter destruction. And we begin each day with prayer. 
giving thanks to God for what God is doing and what God is calling us to do. This is loving your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength and loving your neighbor and yourself. So what does the world need now? The words of the prophet Micah still echo. Micah spoke to Hebrew people in the midst of crisis, maybe not so different from 2020. And Micah's words were this, what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. That, my friends, is discipleship. Thank you, Mary Elizabeth Moore, for great words for our time. Today's scripture reading is a quotation of Jesus, spoken as the storm clouds were gathering, as he gathered with his disciples to share that Last Supper, the very familiar Last Supper story. And in the Gospel of John, Jesus washes their feet and then describes to his disciples the grotesque events that will lead to his betrayal, torture, and execution. In the middle of all the darkness of those moments, Jesus gives them a new commandment. And I see this new commandment as the sort of fulcrum verse of the Gospel of John. The whole Gospel is written around it. Jesus says, I give you a new commandment. Love each other. Just three words. Love each other. And this is how he continues after saying that. This is how everyone will know that you are my disciples when you love each other. By implication, I think Jesus is saying the only way that the world is going to change and be healed is when people function as role models of love. Words are great, but they only go so far. Love has to be shown, acted out, demonstrated, not just talked about. You remember the famous St. Francis of Assisi quote, which actually St. Francis never said. It was said by a French priest centuries after Francis. Preach the gospel at all times, and only if absolutely necessary, use words. Ours is a faith rooted in a lifestyle rather than a creed. Beliefs may impact what you do, but they are no substitute for a life lived in love. Archbishop Oscar Romero wrote, Let us not tire of preaching love. It is the force that will overcome the world. Let us not tire of preaching love. Though we see the waves of violence succeeding, drowning the fire of Christian love, love must win out. It's the only thing that can. And those waves of violence he spoke about led to his assassination even as he preached and lived out a life of love for his people. Love often involves sacrifice. In Archbishop Ramiro's case, it was his life. But for most of us, it's sacrificing time and money and energy, our rigid ideas, even some self-respect and long-held cultural habits, so that love can be expressed and recognized. Love is a risky business. It can easily backfire or be misunderstood. But we mustn't pull back. The risk is worth the gain. In our time, we're aware that there's much that's both immoral and morally ambiguous in the world around us. We're in a culture of fear and anxiety, of violence, of segregation, of racial superiority, and terrible indifference to the pain of other people. This has presented the faith community with a mountain of challenge that at times seem impossible to scale. But we have a God who calls us and calls you and me 
to start the ascent of that mountain of impossible and trust that God will be with us on the treacherous and risky path, which is the love each other lifestyle. A life of Christian discipleship is a life of continuing growth and experiment. It will involve a lot of personal piety, of, of prayer and meditation, of reflection on the scriptures, and especially the teaching of Jesus. This is how we grow. It will involve taking time out for worship, for training ourselves, for having group reflection and accountability. But the largest percentage of our time will be spent in being a role model of love, not only for ourselves, but for each other. As I was preparing uh, these words, I, I had to struggle with a quote I found from Catholic social activists and a personal hero of mine, Dorothy Day. She says, love in action is harsh and dreadful when compared to love in dreams. Love in action is harsh and dreadful when compared to love in dreams. So many of us, including me, still carry around, I think, a, a romantic feel-good understanding of love. The love in dreams uh, leads nowhere. If we're to overcome violence, racism, white supremacy, bigotry, anti-Semitism, anti-Muslim feelings, along with all the injustices that surround us, we're going to find ourselves dealing with some harsh and dreadful love realities. With people behaving in harsh and dreadful ways with harsh and dreadful consequences. But we're not alone. We have each other as a support system. And the God of love we know best in Jesus has promised to be with us always, even to the end of time. God's love is unending. Love each other. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now Reverend Becky Goodwin will lead us all in prayer. Love, 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 love. Christians, this is your call. Love your neighbor as yourself, for God loves all. Love is the way of Jesus. Love is the path of disciples. Love is the answer to all the questions. Love is the greatest gift of God's grace. Let us pray together now in a spirit of love. I invite you to respond with the following when I show you this card. Try it right now. God of love, we give you our hearts. We give thanks for all the ways you show us your love. We know your love for us when we witness human kindness and compassion. And we know your love when we are dedicated to peace with justice. God of love, we give you our hearts. We lift up all of our needs and our concerns for all the needs of the world. You will invite us to help one another near and far, and we will hear your call to follow in the ways of Jesus. God of love, we give you our hearts. Let us pray now for the power to give love and the power to receive love in the words that Jesus gave us. Our mother, father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. My thanks to everyone who has contributed to this worship service, to Elisha Labia, who read to us so beautifully, to Reverend Dr. Mary Elizabeth Moore for sharing with us, for Reverend Becky Goodwin for praying with us, to Kath Fenimore Brown, to Robert and PJ Rouch, and to Jim and Jean Strathdee for leading our music, and to Irene Celadon, our video creator. Today's closing hymn is Jim Strathdee's We Are Called to Follow Jesus. 
Please join Jim and Jean in singing together. We are called to follow Jesus as faithful disciples. When pain of the world surrounds us with darkness and despair, when searching just confounds us with false hopes everywhere, when lives are starved for meaning and destiny is bare, we are called to follow Jesus and let God's healing flow through us. We see with fear and trembling our aching world in need, confessing to each other our wastefulness and greed. May we with steadfast to follow Jesus and let God's justice flow through us. The church is a holy vessel, the living waters flow, to nourish all its peace. My friends, this time of worship has come to an end. Go into the week ahead, determined that you are going to be a role model of love, delighting in the life that God has given you. And God will be with you till we meet again. Amen. <laughs>